What's up YouTube? This is Elder Stacy Zanders coming to you with another video. But before we get into the video, I would just would like to say on my YouTube page, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Remember, it does not cost you a dime to hit that subscribe and that like button. Please like the video and leave comments below. I would like to have the discourse and the dialogue with you. I really do appreciate everybody that subscribes to the channel and listens to the content. Hopefully that we're saying something that will educate you and inform you. This is for education and entertainment purposes only. And um, so I, I just want to take a look at something here. Um, you know, um, this is I'm a Christian. And I, I asked a question before a time ago. And I asked this, uh, the group of people that was teaching. And I asked them about space. And I asked them this simple question. Is space, outer space, is it dark? Or is it light? When you look up into outer space, what are you perceiving? Is it the blackness of space or are we looking at light? And in the context of what the scripture says here. Okay, but let's go, let's go to Genesis chapter one. Let's take a look at this. And this is something for you to think about. Listen, I'm not telling you to accept this as gospel of Bible truth. This is what I'm saying. I think is I think it's good for you to understand, to take this information and listen to, because I've been a student of the word for almost 30 years. So this is really, really good information. It's interesting. It's something for you to ponder and to think about. And before I, we read the scripture, I just want to say this also, that you have to look at this in the light of science. A lot of times in the Christian community, we typically don't teach. Now, of course, they uh, science believes in the Darwin theory that everything evolved, but something began somewhere. I even tell people, someone asked me before, do I believe in the Big Bang Theory? And I told them, yes, I believe in the Big Bang Theory, but not as Charles Darwin teaches it. Because in the beginning, when the Bible says in the beginning, God said, when God spoke, I do think that there was a thermonuclear explosion of power that took place. And ex nihilo, out of nothing, everything bust, burst into existence. So I do believe that there was a Big Bang, but it's not Charles Darwin's theory. I believe the theory in the beginning was that God said, let there be, boom. And I believe out of nothing, ex nihilo, out of nothing, everything burst into existence. So I do believe in that Big Bang Theory. It's just the, the, the proper version of that theory is what I believe in. But let's go to this particular scripture here. Let's go to Genesis chapter one, verse number three. Let's read this here. I just want to read these few words that's highlighted here. These words that are highlighted right there. And God says, God said, let there be light. And there was light. All right. The Bible specifically says, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, the question is, and most people say, well, I know that that's in scripture, but how is that possible? Because if God said, let there be light, there still was the dark void or emptiness of space. And I said, is it? Was it? Is it? Is that possible for God to say something and then not transpire or take place? Okay? So let's look at this. Light <clears throat> or, listen to this, light or visible light is the electromagnetic radiation within the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that is perceived by the human eye. Visible light is usually defined as having uh, wavelengths in the range of 400 to 700 nanometers, corresponding to frequencies of 750 to 420 terahertz between the infrared and the ultraviolet light wavelengths. All right? So get this. I want you to understand this because the electromagnetic spectrum outside of the visible is subdivided into several parts that also have special names. Get this now, radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. And despite the variety of names, they are all forms of light. So then I ask this question, if God said, let there be light, and there was light, and they, the question is, was space dark or was space lit up? That is the question we must answer. But before I really get into that, let me kind of just show you something here. 
Okay, here's an image of some galaxies here. Now, each one of these are galaxies. You see all of these little points, all of these galaxies. I mean, it's too many galaxies for us to count and number. And here's a cluster of galaxies that are close together. Now, here's the issue you may run into because in between these galaxies, there are great voids. Let's just say, for instance, let's just say this is the Milky. Let's say this is the, uh, let's just say this one here is the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, let's just, can we get a color there? Let's say that's the Milky Way galaxy. And look how close this galaxy is right next to that particular galaxy there. Um, there is a deep chasm in between those galaxies. But as you can look at this image here, just in all that darkness is there, is this darkness darkness or is this darkness lit up? That's the question that we must answer. And the thing you need to understand is, is just because you don't see it, does that mean it's not there? Because there are spectrums of light that you and I as human beings cannot see. Let me give you an example. Snakes see infrared. You and I cannot see that spectrum of light. But snakes or anything that hunts based on body heat or body temperature can see a spectrum of light that you and I cannot see. Am I right? I'm right. You know I'm right. So just because you don't see it does not mean it does not exist. The only way, did you not know that if it was not for the atmosphere above us, you and I would be standing in the blackness of space. The only reason why you and I stand here, look up in the sky and see blue, that is the color that comes through the most through the atmosphere, is because we have a pocket or a cushion of air that separates you and I from being standing in interstellar space. That perception that we have and because that um, atmosphere and then above that that electromagnetic field it traps light on the inside so you and I can see on the inside but if it was not for the atmosphere everything around us would be totally utterly pitch black dark but just because you don't see the light does not mean that the light does not exist you and I cannot see radio waves we can't see microwaves, we can't see infrared, we can't see ultraviolet light, x-rays or gamma rays, but does it mean that it does not exist just because you don't see it? No, it does not. So when God said, let there be light, the universe was lit up. Now, if you could put on glasses or some type of binoculars and go into interstellar space where you can see all the spectrums of light space would be actually glowing it would be lit up gamma rays is probably one of the most pronounced rays of light that is out there but you and i just cannot perceive it but we know it's there because they feel the uh, astronauts if they're not in, if they're doing those spacewalks too long they cannot be out there for too long because that gamma rays will ultimately penetrate the suits that they are wearing they have to be protected from all of these waves that are out there in interstellar space so i just i just, just want to drop that on you the universe is lit up because there are spectrums of light that you and i cannot see the birds and the fish in the oceans navigate by the electromagnetic field you or i cannot see that spectrum of light but they have been designed to where they can see it. That's why they always know where due north is. Now, if you do something to the electromagnetic field, then the birds and all of those animals, they will, they'll lose their sense of direction and they would not know where to fly. So listen, when he says that let there be light, there was light. Everything in the universe lit up. And just because you don't see it does not mean it does not exist. Are you following me? When people talk about faith, some people saying seeing is believing. In life, you have to believe before you see. You have to, if you're gonna, just say you wanna start a business. You have to, in your mind, see you running, operating that business before it comes to fruition. You have to take it out of the abstract. It has to come out of the regions of your psyche and you have to bring it into existence. 
So you have to believe it before you see it. That's why it says we walk by faith and not by sight. Just because you don't see a thing doesn't mean it does not exist. You believe that God exists, but you have never seen him. You believe in faith, but you've never seen faith. You believe fear exists, even though you've never seen it. But you believe that the face of fear exists, just like joy and all of these other things. So what I'm trying to say to you is this. Um, the perception we are connected to this world through our senses but then there's another spectrum or another frequency that all of us must live on and we must believe in that by faith just because my whole message today is really by showing you about the light it's just because you don't see it does not mean it does not exist we still believe things even though we don't see it we were designed that way so just because light, light is out there, the universe is lit up. But if we could see the glory that is out there in the universe, I think it would literally blow our mind. Um, this great chasm, the universe that we live in, it's just such a, such a wonderful place. And remember, God is a God of science. Science, by definition, um, by, according to Dr. Malzero, is a study of what always was. We are just figuring out this creation that this universe that we live in and we're trying to get mankind is trying to get out there and become a part of this bigger picture that we see out here if we can somehow figure out how to get to mars maybe we can get to some other places but i just wanted to drop that on you hopefully that that helps somebody just to see it there the the, the and then i want to say that the word of god is very enlightening it's exciting you can probe into it. You cannot exhaust it. There are so many mysteries inside every mystery. And I just wanted to give that to you in uh, today, that science and the Bible, all of this stuff is connected because God created it. Um, he, he created it all. So until the next time, the next video, I just want to see you all like and subscribe to the channel and tell me, give me your, put your comments down below. I would like to see what you say and we can have that discourse to that, together. And uh, thank you like always. Till the next video, God bless.